And now to the landmark decision out of Washington. A federal appeals court ruled said former President Trump does not have immunity from charges that he plotted to overturn the 2020 election results. In less than 24 hours, too, the United States Supreme Court will hear oral arguments for Trump v. Anderson. The court will decide if Colorado's top court was correct in its decision to exclude Trump from the primary ballot because of his role in the January 6th insurrection. It's complicated, we admit. So let's bring in an expert, professor of law and dean of research and intellectual life at Northwestern, Paul Gowder. Professor, thank you for joining us this morning. Pleasure to be here. This is also complicated to the average person. Like, uh, well, Colorado made a decision. It's now in the hands of, of the high court. So let's get to the questioning here. Uh, let's take a look at Nevada. Just yesterday, President Trump, who wasn't even on the primary ballot there, uh, his presence was felt. Nikki Haley came in with 31% of the vote, uh, losing, though, to the option of none of these. Thoughts on that? I mean, the primary elections are really, you know, traditionally some of the most committed members of the party. And I think, you know, most sort of very, like, vigorous Republicans support Mr. Trump at the moment. And yeah. so that's not terribly surprising. Easy answer there. They're going to get harder as they come, I promise you. Okay. Next question is, everyone is questioning timing, a la the Colorado ballot issue. Trump off the ballot now. Uh, doesn't the Supreme Court need to hear it now because we're in the midst of an election? Uh, basically, they need to decide, can Trump be on the ballot there? That will be an important primary state. Uh, they need to come out with a decision quick, don't they? They do. I mean, and it's going to be fairly challenging for them. It's not impossible. The Supreme Court has turned around very quick decisions, and the Supreme Court has lots of procedural options to do so if they so desire, but it will be challenging. What are they going to do? They're 6 3 conservative. I can't predict. I mean, John Roberts is an institutionalist, right? I mean, he's well known for having a strong inclination to try to do the things that preserve the Supreme Court's legitimacy and ongoing authority. But what that means in this kind of case is anybody's guess. Right. So that would make him four to still five right of him, conservative. All right. Now, a federal appeals court ruled that uh, former President Donald Trump does not have immunity from charges that he plotted to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Uh, what's a conservative going to say there? A convicted insurrectionist, because it's going to be kicked up to their court. Are they going to say a convicted insurrectionist can be president? He hasn't been convicted yet. But their decision might need to come before even a trial, exoneration or conviction. Uh, it's a six to three conservative court to have lied in their confirmation hearing, saying Roe v. Wade was established law, then overturned it. What are they going to do with that one? You know, it's a good question. So I will say sometimes even partisan judges will surprise you. Not all the time by any means, but every once in a while, you know, judges have their ideologies, obviously. And obviously this is a very conservative court. Most of the court are really committed. I hate to say this, but partisans. But even so, I mean, if you think about, for example, you know, Neil Gorsuch wrote the opinion in the Bostock case saying that LGBT people were covered by the employment discrimination law under sex discrimination. I mean, every once in a while, they surprise you. Yeah, so the question is, is do you think ultimately, are they going to be patsies of the party? Because they can call themselves constitutionalist, institutionalist, whatever they want. A constitutionalist who votes on the side of a potentially convicted insurrectionist to be on the ballot would have Benjamin Franklin claiming that he's French. Uh, this would upend everything. What do you think they're going to do with these critical decisions? Six to three again. They are slanted. They are a Trump court. Again, I really don't know. I mean, I do say I share a lot of your concerns. I will also say that a lot of people argue, and I don't agree with this, 
but a lot of people argue that the court should stay out of this, that essentially they should let the people decide and that, you know, it should avoid excluding right, Trump right. from the ballot just because, you know, it, it's supposedly anti-democratic. I think that's a mistake right. because I think our democracy includes the laws to protect our democracy from things like January 6th. Right. But we can't pretend it's an easy question. Yeah, and we have a bicameral and, and three-pronged government, the Supreme Court being a linchpin to that. This is exactly what they probably knew, need to be deciding on. Uh, Professor Paul Gowder, uh, priceless information this morning. Thank you for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.